Hello, welcome to episode 19 and a half of Your Dinosaurs Are Wrong. We're here not doing a specific dinosaur. Instead, we have something weird. A viewer sent in their own art uh, with correspondence asking for a critique of this self-published, self-drawn coloring book that Miss Emily has made. This is not normally something that I would consider the purview of this show because, no offense, Emily, but a self-published coloring book on Etsy is not likely to be anyone's entry point for a specific dinosaur, uh, at least not the way that a movie or a video game is going to be. Uh, also, I can't help but notice that your art style is part of the charm. So like, th these are not necessarily realistic depictions of these animals. These are more... Uh, stylized and maybe even iconographic representations. So I'll try to filter my critiques through that lens. And I might as well point out that your drawings are about on the level that mine were when I was your age. So you have that at least. <laughs> With those caveats in mind, our first animal is Albertosaurus. This is not proportioned like an Albertosaurus. It is all extremities and no torso. It could maybe be a young Albertosaurus, uh, like a juvenile, but it, it, with, a, with a really thick neck. It is appropriately leggy, but the legs are a little too thick distally which is to say the part that's away from the animal. And I see you have the same problem everyone does when they try to draw dinosaur feet, which is, how do you draw dinosaur feet? My solution, when I was your age, was to just hide them in plants. Never mind that there wasn't grass, but uh, I didn't have to draw any dinosaur feet. <laughs> you should look at large ground birds, like emus and ostriches, uh, because the toes shouldn't be of equal length, and the claws should be more like nails than these sharp claws. And I notice that you're missing your hallux dewclaw first toe, which should be up on the inside of the foot. I don't know if tyrannosaurs could clutch the way you have this animal clutching with its foot. Uh, dromaeosaurs could, but they didn't have as much weight to carry around as a tyrannosaur did. As mentioned, there's too much meat up here where the nape of the neck connects to the back. And you've omitted the bumps and ridges and the crests in front of the eyes uh, on the snout. And that's what you would use to identify this as Albertosaurus. So you should, if anything, exaggerate those traits. Also, your nostril is probably too far back. It should be at the front of where the bony naris is. The arms are about the right size. They, they look tiny, but they were tiny. The fingers weren't of equal length, though. The first finger was shorter with a bigger claw, and the hands should face each other because they couldn't pronate them downwards. Should probably be straight coming out of the wrist as well. Like, the, the hand is parallel to the forearm. This animal should probably be restored fluffy. These are salurosaurs, and Tyrannosaurs in particular are frequently de depicted with proto feathers on at least their backs and necks and the back of their heads and with little wings on their tiny arms. This would help you show that back of the jawline, which is the widest point on the skull and isn't even indicated by a line on your drawing. And there we have a marginally more correct Albertosaurus. The next dinosaurs in the book, after the battle dragon, are some birds, avian dinosaurs. Not my specialty, but I noticed that they all look like birds. I don't know what specific bird any of them are trying to be, so I can't give terribly detailed notes. I like the variety of the beaks that you have on these, where, you know, 
the different birds would have different shaped beaks to uh, deal with different kinds of food. That's a classic example of divergent evolution. Uh, your first tract of coverts is always represented by a line. I think you could probably show that that's feathers rather than being whatever that is, some kind of stick. And these birds seem to be in need of some preening. Their flight feathers, their remiges and their tail feathers would probably overlap more. Uh, but other than that, I don't, I don't have much for notes for these guys. <laughs> Moving on to the Comsognathus, which you have unfortunately misspelled. It is Compsognathus. Compsognathus, which is known for being a tiny dinosaur, even though it's no longer the tiniest dinosaur known. Uh, these are appropriately birdie looking. They're a basal solurosaur. I like the large eyes. Your tails, I, I'm, I'm going to refer to all of these because they're clearly copy pasted, but the tail is too short. It should be between one to one and three to two for ratio of, of tail to not tail. So about half the creature's length or more should be tail. The head is too short and round. It should be an elongated teardrop shape. The arms are a bit too small. Uh, and I notice you've got two-fingered hands, or what look like two-fingered hands. Some older restorations of Compsognathus will show two-fingered hands, but it turns out that we had just lost the third finger. They actually had three-fingered hands. Uh, another weird thing that you sometimes see for Compsognathus on older restorations is one species is, refer is uh, restored with fins on its front arms, and it's considered an aquatic species, and that, that has been put to bed, that weird paleo art meme. And like most theropods, the second finger is the longest. And I'm not sure what your foot is supposed to be representing, but if that's a reversed hallux, that's wrong. Uh, a reversed first toe is usually interpreted as an arboreal adaptation, but these animals have short and broad terrestrial ground-dwelling toe claws on them. Also, the first toe wasn't long enough to do that anyway. There's actually some debate about whether these animals would have been feathered, or at least have proto feathers, have dinosaur fluff. It depends on where the Compsognathids fit into the Silurosauria. It at least lacks the fluffy legs and tail of Cynosauropteryx. And it's worth noting that Compsognathus is from the same rock as Archaeopteryx and Archaeopteryx fossils famously preserve feathers, so if there was fluff there, you would kind of expect the fluff to have been preserved. Time will tell. Let's move right along to Dakota Raptor. It is so cool that you know about Dakota Raptor. That's actually a pretty recent find. Uh, a large-bodied North American uh, uh, Deinonychosaur and you portrayed it with feathers and everything, and that's cool. I, I'm, I'm very glad that paleontology is making these discoveries and it's actually trickling down to the public at large. Probably that Saurian game has helped with this particular animal. <laughs> the first thing I notice is that these Dakota raptors would not be able to dance with each other because one has two left feet and the other has two right feet. Once again, the tail is too short but that might be, it should be about the same length as the rest of the animal put together, but these look like they have their necks stretched out instead of in the more traditional S curve, so maybe that's skewing it to look shorter. Your shoulder sockets are really high. I, I realize that a bird's shoulder sockets are pretty high, but these aren't birds, they're bird-like theropods, so the shoulders should be down and back. Uh, the arms overall are probably too long, Assuming that forward bend in the arm is the elbow, uh, your humerus is probably too long, and your first row of coverts is a straight line, whereas in life it would be a row of feathers, so probably make that look like feathers. I do like that you have your flight feathers coming out of the, or well, your remiges. I don't know whether this particular animal would have ever used them for lift, 
Uh, you have them coming out of the second finger, which is exactly what they did do in life, but you've got them coming out at like a 90 degree angle, which they would be at a much shallower angle. And once again, these animals are in need of some preening. Uh, their tail feathers are not overlapping as much as they probably would, and their wing feathers are not overlapping either. I think the teeth would not stick out like that. You had this going on with the Albertosaurus as well, but there their teeth were absurdly long. So even if they had lips, their teeth might have poked out beyond the lips. But with Dakota Raptor, once its mouth was closed, it probably would have not had its teeth exposed. So that'll about do it for our now rather fabulous Dakota Raptor. Uh, I, I am choosing somewhat uh, technicolor palettes for these dinosaurs, even though overwhelmingly likely they would largely be, you know, shades of brown, shades of gray. Uh, mostly because that's the cray crayons that I have. I have one gray crayon. I can't call it, call it them all gray and brown. Um, but let's move on. Let's move on. We got only one more actual dinosaur. We have a, a hybrid dinosaur, which uh, is not a real animal and therefore beyond the purview of this show. It appears to have been based on a chimera specimen. Um, but we had, here he is, Poker the Pteranodon. I am on record defending the use of pterodactyl to refer to all pterosaurs because it's not technically wrong and it's not technically referring to pterodactylus, the genus. But thank you for using pteranodon to refer to a pteranodon. That's nice. This is not a dinosaur, though it is an ornithodiran or an Ava metatarsalian. Uh, it's close enough to dinosaurs that we did an episode on it, uh, which you should totally check out. The wings are pretty well proportioned. Like, this looks like an animal that could fly, as opposed to frequently the wings are just stupidly tiny. The first three, uh, not two, three fingers should be almost halfway down the wing, not so close to the body. And the super pointy wingtips and the visible margin between having your arm bones and the wing membrane, those are kind of outdated. You, it, it's a wing and it ends in more of a curved structure. You also usually see a sharper interior corner leading into where the wing meets the body. It lacks a front membrane between the shoulder and, well, basically the wrist. It would basically attach where the fingers are now. The main membrane is attached to the last toe. I've never seen that before. Maybe that could work? Uh, usually the, the ankle is the furthest down that that attachment goes, but some people will restore it attached to the tail or just attached to the hip. Speaking of the feet, Four toes and a dew claw would be preferred, not three toes of equal length. And I'm really unclear on whether the membrane that goes from the legs to the tail would even be present, but if it's present, it would be attaching from the first toe to the tail. Also, the torso should be more of a triangle than a football. You need big old chest muscles if you're gonna do flapping flight, especially if you're as big as a pteranodon. The head is pretty small compared to the body, even for a female, uh, and the neck that supports it is really scrawny. The beak should curve up, not down, and the nostril is too far forward on the head, as are the eyes. The eyes should be further back and further up. Uh, I used to give pteranodons angry eyes too, and I'm really glad that you depicted this animal with picno fibers, uh, those little fuzzy hairs that pter pterosaurs would have had all over their bodies. So that will about do it for the dinosaurs in this book, or at least the animals closely related to dinosaurs. Non-avian dinosaurs, I should say. I didn't color any birds, but uh, we have a lot of other animals in this book that are not dinosaurs and therefore are not within the purview of this show. We had Albertosaurus, which basically just needed some minor changes to read as an Albertosaurus and not as just some generic Tyrannosaur. We had Compsognathus, which wound up being a little lumpier than expected, but generally just needs to look like a light birdie theropod. 
We had Dakota Raptor, which is wonderfully fluffy despite its weird wings. And we had Pteranodon, which I have elected to make turquoise, even though in life it would probably not be that brightly colored except on the head. I want to thank Miss Emily for sending me her artwork for my harsh, entirely uncalled for level of uh, critique. And I want to thank all of you for bearing with me as I sit here and color as a grown man. Thank you for watching Your Dinosaurs Are Wrong. Uh, tune in next time for Allosaurus. Thank you.